Okay, continuing with symbolic uh, formal logic, we are now going to go to chapter 2, and we are going to start working on our truth tables. Uh, now, it talks a bit about the language we're going to be working in here. We're going to call it sentential logic. SL is the abbreviation. SL for sentential logic. And um, we're just going to start introducing the book, you know, yammers about this and that and the other for a minute. And we're just going to dive into our truth tables. Now these are the truth tables or truth conditions for certain rules. And here's the basic setup of it. We have a P and a Q. And we want all of the possibilities. True and true is possible. And false and false is possible. And it's also possible for this to be true and this one false, or for this one to be false and this one true. Now we've got all the possible possibilities of P and Q. Now that's the basic setup, and then we're going to change what happens on this side. And for right now, we're going to talk about P and Q is a sentence. P and Q would be true when both P and Q are true. P and Q would be false when one of them is not true. So we can see it would be false in all these circumstances and true only in this circumstance. Now that's, go ahead and write that down, take notes on this. Just write down a copy, this is the truth table for ampersand. Truth table for the ampersand. Or this is actually called a conjunction. Okay, and now the truth conditions for the OR. Now just to make a quick note here, this is P or Q. And this does not mean that P or Q and not P and Q, okay? This does not mean not P and Q. This means we could have P and Q both obtained. We're using a weak version of this. We're just saying at least one of these has to obtain. Both could obtain. That would be fine. We're saying at least one of these has to obtain. So our definition for the way we are using it, if both of them obtain, we're fine. If one obtains, we're fine. If one obtains, we're fine. But if both are false, then we're false on that sentence. P or Q, true, 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 false. That's the con truth conditions there. Now, the truth conditions on the negation are easy. Uh, and in fact, we don't even need this whole setup here. We'll just do our own little thing. And P could be either true or false. And we're going to make our sentence be tilde P. Now, when tilde P obtains, then if P is true, that's a contradiction, so the sentence would be false. But when tilde P obtains and P fails, which is what that means, then it would be true. So it's just the opposite of this, which is exactly what you would expect a neg negative sign to do. Okay, now we're going to look at how to combine some of these sentential connectives. We're not going to do any more truth tables for now. We'll do some of that later. We're going to look at <coughs> the following symbolization. We've got S or C in parentheses. And also not Z and E. So it's saying all of this is true and either S or C is true. Now what these stand for here is the steam engine was the greatest modern invention. The computer was the greatest modern invention. The zipper was the greatest modern invention, and the zipper has made our life easier. So this sentence simply says, either the steam engine or the computer is the greatest modern invention. Either it's one of those. And also the zipper is not the greatest modern invention, although the zipper has made life easier for us. So let me just clarify then that Z stands for the zipper is the greatest modern invention. C stands for the computer is the greatest modern invention, and S steam engine. 
And S is the steam engine, is the greatest modern convention. So we're saying not Z. We're saying the zipper fails. It is not the greatest modern invention. But, but the steam engine or the computer is the greatest modern invention. And then we just tag on at the end here, the zipper has made our life easier. That's what E stands for. So we're seeing that we can put parentheses around things and connect them, and you always have to respect parentheses. For example, if we just took this parenthesis off, this would fail to be a sentence. This is not a sentence. I don't know what it means. It means nothing. And if we took this off, we would likewise just be screwed. So you always have to have, any given connective has to have the things it acts on. You can't just have a blur of stuff. It's just like algebra. Every parenthesis has another parenthesis to match it to. Now we're going to look at uh, the following sentence. Both. It is not the case that Sherlock Holmes is fond of criminals, and it is not the case that Watson is fond of criminals. So let's say our sentences are Sherlock Holmes is fond of criminals, and Watts is fond of criminals. And we want to say both of those are false, so we're going to say it is not true that Sherlock Holmes is fond of criminals, and it is not true that Watts is fond of criminals. And there's our sentence. Both Holmes and Watts do not like criminals.